Welcome to Hoops High, Chicago's leader in youth-produced sports broadcasting and youth media education. Hoops High is produced by high school students learning the skills of professional broadcasting. Hoops High is the flagship program of Free Spirit Media and is made possible in partnership with After School Matters, the Chicago Public Schools, and Chicago Access Network Television. We hope you enjoy the show. for the Jimmy Sanders Tournament. Today we have the Panthers of Von Super taking on the Eagles of Chicago Hope. You're watching Hoops High. You're here with Hoops High. Von Steuben taking Hope Academy on. Tip off is going Hope's way. Number zero, Anthony Hampton with a tip. Have number one stuttering with the ball and passes it to Malika. Gets a hand on Number 42, Ricky Calvin. It's bounced out of bounds, and number three takes it out. Ricky spins and no puts it up, but it's no good. Ball is out of bounds, going Von Steuben's way. We got number three. Joseph taking the ball out, inbounding it to number one, Demetrius. Passes it back to number three. A long pass. Couldn't even hold it. He was calling Missed for it all that time. Number 15. You don't want that thing, boy. McDaniel you tips ain't in that it. Lane, boy. And the ball was missed. Now it's Hope's way. Got number zero, Anthony Hampton driving. Quick pass to number one, Armando. Gives it back to number zero. He travels with it at the top of the key. Von Steuben will be taking it out from the side. Number 15, David. Passes it to number three to take the ball down the court. Joseph. Fifteen and three playing pity pad passes it to Demetrius for the three and it's in now. Putting his team Von Stewart on the board. First one to score this game. They trapping very quick in the game as well. Armando with the quick pass number forty two. And one. Oh no. And All one. No oh basket. no basket. Number forty two, Ricky. Basket did not count. Now have Von Steuben. Number three, inbounding the ball to number one, Demetrius. And they fighting this press. Bounce pass to number 15, David. Number one for another three, and it's off the mark. Mm -mm. That's how you Rebound by that. number 23. Oh, that's good. 33, heat. I'm sorry. Number one N1. for the end one. Why would you do that? Number one, Demetrius. He was fouled by number 12, Lafayette McGarry from Hope Academy. First foul of the game, and it's the M1. Demetrius for the three-point play, and it's in there. Have Hope inbounding the ball. Number three. Alejandro inbounds it to number one, Armando, but he is stripped at the basket. Now we have Demetrius, number one for Von Steuben, taking the ball down and is quickly defended by number 12, Lafayette McGarry. Jacked it. And the jump shot was good by number three, Alejandro. Joseph Richard. Sorry, it was Joseph. For Von Steuben. And we have a quick timeout, so we're going to toss to a quick piss at him. I'm going to need for you, Brooklyn, I'm going to need for you to play real good and real hard. I don't care about any excuses. You need to come on and play now. Go now, come on. Go the ball. Go it. 
And we're back here at Collins Academy, 1313 Sacramento. Have Von Steuben facing off against Hope Academy. Ball is currently in Von Steuben's possession. We have number three for Von Steuben, Joseph. Inbounding it. Passes it to the big man, number 33. Who stepped out of bounds, number three. So now, have Hope Academy taking the ball out. Number zero, Anthony Hampton getting trapped, but outlet Armando helps him out. Number 33 just got off the heezy. Robert Vega playing head. face ball a little bit. We got number three, Alejandro. Inbounding the ball and goes up, goes up for the two-pointer, but it's no good. And then we have a jump ball between number 33 from Hope, Robert Vega, and number 22 from Von Steuben. Mary Tony. Have number three. Joseph inbounding the ball, number 15 possession, number 22, and number 33 for the two-pointer, and it's in there for Von Steuben. He was calling for it all day. Malachi Martius for the quick two points. Number one for Eight Hope, for quick passing, number zero. Number three touches the ball as well, hands it off to number one, Armando, who still has possession at the top of the key, setting up the play. It's being guarded by number 15, David McDaniel, and foul has been called against David. A little too much defense going on there. So we're going to have Hope take the ball out on the side. Number three, Jose. Oh, I'm sorry. Number three, Alejandro, inbounds the ball to Anthony Hampkin, number zero. Number, number one. one. Pops up for the three, and it's in there. A long three, nothing but net from number three, Armando. Von Steuben ball, a long pass to number one, quick pass. Travel by number 22, Jeremy Davis. He, he just walks with the ball. Like, was doing a little skip in there. Hope inbound in the ball. Big man number 42 meets him at the line. Number 32 touches the ball as well, then screens and rolls. Number zero, Anthony Hampton. Hampton, I'm sorry, currently with the ball. Number one. Boutard is produced by high school students learning to be professional broadcast. Off the camera work and asking directly after the Number one, Demetrius. Strips the ball up and takes it all the way to the basket for a quick two. Another steal by number three, Joseph, for oh, Von Stupin, and me. that two was good as well. That's four points added to the fast break steals. Von Stupin not playing with this defense. Uh -uh. They I pressing him full court, beginning of the game. And they up. Time. Because of a 13, 14, I'm sorry, oh, to look three. At the block. A good block. Then a foul was called. Come on. David McDaniel, I saw the block. And um, they're saying it is a foul. So we're going to have Hope going to the line. Oh, it was a technical foul, I see. Number 15 mm -hmm. was called for a tech for unsportsmanlike conduct. First foul he had was our actual physical foul. This time it was a tech. So we have Hope Academy, Anthony Hampkins shooting the technical foul. The first one was no good. Second one is up in the air and it's in the backboard action a little bit. Since it was a tech, we're gonna have Hope taking the ball out on the side yet again. Von Steuben on defense, number three. Alejandro inbounding the ball. We have a stack. A quick move, number zero, Anthony Hampton. 
at the top. Passes it to number one, Alejandro. He throwing them balls. Swinging them get shoulders back. and them elbows. A quick steal two. by number he three, carried. Joseph, yet again, with a quick two points. It looked like he could be dunking right about now. Yeah. But he's been but he saved, was always you know, under the rim, you know, conserving his energy and uh, just laying it up. Pass by number 32. Von Stuber has some good defense. They do. Full court presses working out in their favor. They're currently up by two. And that pass from Alejandro. I mean, I'm sorry, Armando. I don't know where it was going. But it was recovered in a three by number zero. It's off the mark. But number 42 with the offensive rebound, Ricky Calvin. Number zero, Anthony Hampton for the three, and he misses as well. So now, ball going Von Steuben way. Demetrius, number one, taking it down. Pass to number 44, Demetrius. Trey ball. And a three is off the mark. Rebound by number 42, Ricky Calvin. Number one, bringing the ball down the court for Hope Academy, Armando. Free Spirit Media strives to give students a voice and is associated with True Star Magazine. You can check them out at www.truestarears.com. Remember, this is where teams speak the truth. Check out the Hoop Tide Hype column at True Star Ears and True Star Magazine. Back to game action, we have Von Steuben's Malachi Matias, number 33, for the foul against number 42, Ricky Calvin, who is shooting two for Hope Academy. And the first shot is in now, bringing the score to 16 to five. That was a good no-look bounce pass by number one, Armando to number 42 before he was fouled. It would have been an end one, but unfortunately, number 42 did not get the ball in the basket. But Knock he makes out. the second free throw, and that makes up for the two points. We have Von Steuben inbounding the ball. And a rolling jump by number 42 after those two free throws. Ricky gets immediately back on defense. And Ball was deflected out of bounds. Von Steuben way still. We have number Malachi. 33 with the he ball. Know. What trying do you to do something to do with, with it. it. Malachi Thought working a little bit. Number three with the fake. Pass number Another 44 one? who jacks up the three and no. is Malachi. off the mark. Good try by me. Demetrius from 44. Unfortunately, the ball was turned over and it's going Hope Academy's way. Number three, Alejandro yeah, inbound. Passes it to number 42. This thing is official. Ricky. Number one, Armando at the top of the key. Telling his men to spread out, make room. Looks like he's going to drive or something. And there's the pick. And, oh. Everybody got some of that. Yes, they did. Another almost assist by number one, Armando. He got some good looks. He's throwing a dime. Some great passes. Number 42 has... This is his second time being on the receiving end of one of those passes and his second time at the line as well. And he's three for three. Ricky is currently 100% for his free throws. And 42's last free throw is up. And it's in there as well, four for four. We have number three, Joseph bringing the ball inbounds for Von Stupin. Passing it to number two, Daly. Passes it. Oh, travel by number 44 for Von Stupin. Demetrius Mims. So that's another turnover. Ball going Hope Academy's way. 42, Ricky inbounds the ball. Number one throws it up and it's in there. Armando puts another bucket in there. Number three, Joseph inbound on the ball, gets it back after passing it to number two, Daly. Joseph is driving the ball. Quick pass, number 44, who jacks it to number 33, and it's in there. Get it. For the spinning, put in Malachi Matthews. 
More pressure on the ball. A charge was called. Oh, it was a defensive foul. I'm sorry. Ball number 12. Ali Kanji, his second. The team fifth. Number 12. Foul, number one. So number one inbounds for Hope and pass it to number 42, Ricky. And he is fouled. Another one of those attempt assists. He was not shooting, so the ball will be inbounded. Another stack at the free throw line. Armando looking for a pass, and the five seconds is up. He could not get the ball out in time, so it's a turnover going Von Steuben's way. We have a timeout from Hope Academy, and we're going to talk to a quick PSA. What up, y'all? This is Common, and you're watching Hoops Hot. Who is this fool, man? This ain't that kind of fuck. This week, man. Huh? Hey. This week? Look this, man. Hmm? Anyway, man. What? Hey, you're rocking with Amari Stoudemire, and you're watching Hoops High. Watch it or watch nothing. And we're back with more game action. So, um, score is currently 18 to 10. Growing Von Steuben's way because of their impeccable defense they've been putting on. Ever since their eight minutes in the first quarter started counting down, they've been full court pressing. Hope been coughing up the ball. <coughs> but, <coughs> you oh, know. Two balls, right? <laughs> that was just two turnovers. Man. But, you know, Hope hasn't given up. They still have their head in the game, and it's currently their ball. Number three for Hope inbound it, Alejandro. They were stacked. He broke it up. Number three for the three, and it's in and there. Down. Number three, Alejandro for the three. Alejandro Lucas put it on the board. Yeah. We got number three, Joseph, with the turnover. Quick pass, number one, and he puts it up, and it's oh, off the mark. Billy Willie. And that's our first quarter. On your way back. That is the end. That's the first quarter, folks. And uh, Von Steuben only leading by five. And we're going to toss to our sideline reporter for a quick interview. Hi, I'm Tiffany Moore, and I'm here with fan and mom Keisha Lackey. So, Keisha, who are you here supporting today? I'm here supporting my son, Michael Lackey, number 34, for the Von Steuben Panthers. So how has uh, how proud of you are you for your son for has been participated in this tournament? I'm extremely proud of him. It's really hard for kids these days to keep an active style with basketball and with schoolwork at the same time. So he's able to balance it out. So it makes me extremely proud of him. I understand your son's a junior, so this is a really important year for him as far as college and ACTs. So as a parent, how do you keep him focused on his schoolwork? I just make sure that I reinforce no matter what happens as far as basketball, that he always puts schoolwork first because at the end of the day, the education is the key to success. Thank you so much for your time. Now back to our announcers. And we're back. Thank you, Tiffany for that great interview. You just tuning in. Um, Kimberly Stewart as your play-by-play. -play. No, Big Mark as your color commentator. And we're here at 1313 Sacramento for this all-day tournament. We have Hope Academy against Von Steuben. Von Steuben up by five, score currently being 18 that D is to 13. They putting the heat down, putting the hammer down. True, true. Tough defense. Number zero for Hope Academy, Anthony Hampton. Oh, this is a number one for the behind the back pass. Come on. 
to number 32 who tries to put it in there and it's off Jordan Davis. So we have the ball going the other way. Demetrius, number one for Von Steuben. Number 13 for the sharp pass. Fakes it. Number Knock three it for the long jumper, and it's off the mark. Oh, look like he's going to try to do some pants. He will. That's what I'm Mr. Fancy Pants. He like it was going to be a tip dunk, but, you know. No, I don't think he getting up there like that. No. He cocked it back like he oh, was. Oh, good way to yank it. Number one, Armando handling the ball pretty well. Good pick. And Knock the jump shot is off the mark. So number one. Now let's see if he can up. Von Steuben. I don't know what that was. I think that was a call. That should have been like doubling or something. Traveling. He clearly Stone. let the ball go. Number two jacks it up for a three, but it's off the mark. He did something that we all know just wasn't legal. It was. Number 22 at the top. It's just us with the assist. Number 22, Martin passes it for the assist. Now we have Armando facing up against the other number one. Demetrius trying to get in there. Oh, don't touch that flow. That count as a crossover. Yeah, it does. Armando is just, he, he not for none. He worked taking it in. I Number zero is as well, and the assist to number That's 42. That's how you get buckets. Number zero, Anthony Hampton, a good assist to Ricky Calvin, number 42. The big man is just getting all the buckets now. Number one, two, and three for Von Steuben's side, touching the ball. Number 13, currently in possession, Paris Garrett. Number two, jacking it up. And it's no, off the mark. It. Number 13 over with the the over the back. I don't know if they called it. But. Number 15. 15. Number 13. 13, yeah, exactly. 13. Pavon Steuben, Paris Garrett. Call for the over the back, as I presumed. And uh, number three for Hope and Academy. Alejandro will be setting up for his two free throws. First one is in there. He's shooting them like it's nothing, you know. Knock it around. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Second one in the air, and it's in there as well. Hustles back to get on the defense. We have number one, Demetrius, bringing the ball down the court. Met by number zero, Anthony Hamkin from Hope Academy. They swinging the ball. Number one touches it. Number two touches it. Number 22 flashes. He gets nothing, but he's still moving. Number 13, faking him out. He drives, and, and it's almost, almost hit it, but it's but off the mark. Don't count. Number 13, Paris Garrett for Von Steuben. We have number one, Armando. With the quick pass. Good steal. Number one with the steal, no. and he Touches lays it up. Number Two one. points, Demetrius. 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 Mm. Number one, crisscrossing, Armando driving. Ooh, Bounce pass, number 33, and he Smoked jacked. It. Smoke dog, baby. Number 33, Robert Vega, good try. Unfortunately, he misses, and we have... Number one driving, drives the defenders out so he can That's assist it shot. to number three, Joseph Rancher. For the deuce. He pushed that joint in there. Number one, Armando. Dribbling at the top of the key, moves to the left side. Wanted to pop that, that foul. There go the foul. Saw it coming. Number one, Demetrius Faulkner fouls number one for Hope Academy, Armando, who heads to the line for the two shots. Pretty sure I saw that coming. It's like a number one, number one rivalry between Von Steuben and Hope Academy. And number one for Hope has been working. He's been working. Number one for Hope, he's a worker. He is. And he misses his free throw. But hey. And Armando unfortunately misses the one and one. And number one for Von Steuben brings the ball down, passes it to number 13, who drives to the right side. They're swinging it. Number one to 15, 15 to 13, 13 to three. And turnover. 
And it is. Armando has the ball, bringing it down the court. For Hope Academy, Jacks at the three, number zero, and it's in now. Anthony Hampton, Hampton, I'm sorry, for the three. And it's What's good. They're only down four now. Score is 24 to 20. Have number 15, David McDaniels, bring the ball down. Bounce pass right into the paint to number 13. Hard in that paint. Paris Garrett for Von Steuben. Hope Academy didn't see it Keep coming. Keep up with the game action and the Hoops High crew with Twitter. Just search Hoops High FSM and follow us. And it's out of bounds by Hope Academy. And the ball is going Von Steuben's way. Number 15, David McDaniel inbounded it to number 32. Jason Salar, who is picked. Another quick pass to the paint, oh, number 32, jacked jacks it up, and it's hey, in there. Made up for. Jason Salar so for the lot. quick, long jumper. Number one, Armando, bringing the ball down the court for Hope Academy. His handles are Looks like just he want to jack up a shot, and he does. The three is... Oh. Almost, but it's off the mark. Offensive rebound by number three, Hope Academy, Alejandro. Number it's one, Armando with the ball at the top of the key. Moves to the left side and backs up a bit. And we have an offensive foul by number 42, Ricky Calvin from Hope Academy. 42, 42. So the ball is going to turn over and go Von Steuben Panthers way. We have number 15, David McDaniel inbound in the ball, number 32, Jason Salar. Jason slows it up a bit, brings it down, fakes right, goes left. Number 15, switch positions, top of the key. He passes it to number one. Thought about it. Number 15, he wanted that shot, but he stopped himself. We have a turnover. Oh, foul. Yes, it is a turnover. Foul number 22. Actually, it was a foul. Key the, players for this quarter are, you know, number one, Armando for Hope. And um, I have to go with number three, Pavon Steuben and Joseph. So currently number 33, Hope Academy, Robert Vega is shooting one and ones, and he makes the first one, and the second one is off the mark. Off the back arm. Hope Academy decided they need no men down there in the brackets, so they were all set up on defense by the time Von Steuben got down there. Number 15, fake that three and put up that Corroded shot, and it's in and there. In one for number 15 for Von Steuben, David McDaniels. He is now going to the line currently for his opportunity to complete this three-point play. He was fouled by number 42, Ricky Calvin from Hope Academy, who is currently getting a talking to by his coach. He's telling him just keep his hands up. He don't have to reach, you know, put nobody on him. And the shot was good for the three-point play. Hope taking the ball out, but they're stopped. Number 15, David McDaniel with the good hands, good Ooh. defense. One minute, 46 seconds remaining. So Hope will be taking the ball out from the side. Passes it to number zero, Anthony Hapkin. Hamilton, I'm sorry, from Hope Academy. He does a little shaking Ooh. and baking for number 15, David McDaniels. We have a drive. Travel. By number 42, Hope Ricky Academy. Calvin. Ricky Calvin tries to drive, but he travels. One minute, ball is currently in Von Steuben's possession. Number 15, David McDaniel bringing the ball down. Swings it to the side. Number two, Daly. Swings to number one, number 15. Almost carried there. Number one, oh, shaking and baking. Number 12. Lafayette McGarry, another long pass, number two. Number one takes the ball and it's out of bounds. 
is going the same way. Off on Hope Academy. Have number two daily inbound in the ball. Number 15, David McDaniel getting the ball. Number two, pass it to number one. They're swinging. Number two, bounce pass it to number three and kicks it out to number one for the in there. Long, long three. But his foot was on the line, unfortunately, so it was only a two point. Hope Academy have number 12 driving it down, but it's blocked by number three from Von Steuben, Joseph Rancher. Number 15, stalling at the half court line. Passes it to number two, Daly. They're hurling the ball right about now. 25 seconds left before halftime. Hope having no incentive to go get the ball. They're just sitting there in their 2 3 zone. Coach is telling them what to do, and they're running around, chasing the ball. A lot of long passes, quick passes. Number 15. Travel. Travels. Mm. David McDaniels travels, time. and it was a turnover. See, patience pays off. Coach told them to wait. They waited, and they got their turnover. And a trap. Number 12 from Hope Academy. Lafayette McGarry was trapped. Right after inbounding the ball. And... The jump ball turned over to the Panthers, Von Steuben's ball, and they called a timeout. So now we're going to toss to a quick PSA. Who is this fool, man? This ain't that kind of fuck. This week, man. Huh? This week? Look at this, man. What? Anyway, man. <laughs> Hey, little bro. What's going on with you, man? Nah, I was messing with you. Well, you're rocking with Amari Stoudemire, and you're watching Hoops High. Watch it or watch nothing. And we're back. More game action. If you're just tuning in, I'm Kimberly Stewart, serving as your play-by-play. -play. Big the As the color commentator. And then putback is in there. By number 15 for Von Steuben. David McDaniel with the good putback. It is currently halftime. And the score is 35-21 going Von Steuben's way. Half We're setting up show. for a quick halftime show. And Von Steuben's coach, Vince Carter, is about to be interviewed. V.C. It was 35-21. Are you ready? So it's now we're going to toss to a quick interview with Tiffany and Von Steuben's head coach. Hi, I'm Tiffany Moore, and I'm here with head coach Vince Carter. So, Coach Carter, how do you feel like your team has done in the first half, and what do you think you guys need to improve on? Well, it's our first game, so I thought we came out with a lot of intensity. We played really well. Uh, I thought we had some defensive lapses, so we're going to work on that. But they ran the offense the way it was supposed to. I tried to play a few more players. So they just got to get used to the game. It's our first game. So with this being the first game, what do you guys look forward to, or what do you specifically look forward to in the future for your team for this season? Well, I definitely want to see them improve on everything they do. Um, you know, we've got some seniors that uh, have some that have played uh, se uh, varsity basketball since they were sophomores. So we definitely want to see them play as well as they can. And some of the young guys need to improve as much as they can for the next uh, few games. You mentioned that you have some seniors. So how does your curriculum help them get scholarships, and how does your curriculum prepare them for college? Well, Von Steuben is a magnet school. All our seniors have really good grade point averages uh, and good test scores because. Um, you know, we prepare as a college preparatory school at the magnet school. So that's not really the issue as far as going to college. Uh, the last three years, everybody's gone to college. So that's the easy part. Now, how high they want to go in basketball playing, sometimes that's, that's on them. Thank you so much for your time, Coach, and good luck. All right, thank you. 
Now I'm gonna toss it to a PSA. basketball then I got the opportunity to go pro after thinking about it I considered it but did I make the right choice what's up this is Ben Gordon you're watching hoops high and we're back. Third quarter on the way. This has been a long, hard Top of the game. third quarter. My dish just slipped. Might need to get a medic to come fix that. Yeah, so I'm saying here, excruciating pain. I'm pretty sure that it's supposed to be intact. Unfortunately, it's not. But what is intact is Von Steuben's game tonight, 35 to 21. The PSA is drama's documentaries that you see between breaks on Hoops Hot are produced by Free Spirit Media students at North Lundell College Preparatory High School, the Gary Comer Youth Center, and Powerhouse High. We hope that you enjoy the stories and messages that we on keep all sharing. With them old boys, you gon' get over. Raw Reason Rovers, these, these people girls love, love Chelsea. Chelsea. Now that boy is slumped over. You know when you be slumped over yeah, no. after playing a hard, These boys hard are game, good defense, good offense, just God. fully dedicated. You just got to slum over, you know. Sosa said it better. Now we got Hope inbound on the ball, number three to number 42 for Hope Academy. Ricky Calvin, number zero, Anthony Hampkin. Hamilton, <laughs> I'm sorry. Currently with the ball. We have a cut, cut. ref timeout, so um, we're going to toss to a PSA quick PSA out. while they figure this situation out. Who is this fool, man? Man, this ain't that kind of fuck. It's sweet, man. Huh? Hey, you think it's sweet? Fuck this, hmm? man. What? Right away, man. <laughs> Hey, little bro. What's going on with you, man? Nah, I was messing with you. This is Luar Dan, you're watching the Hoops Hot. And we're back. Have number one from Some Hope Academy. Armando inbound in the ball, looking for a man to pass to. And it's turned over, number one for And he gets that lay, that lay that. Faulkner with the good eyes. Another, another steal. Number three. Oh, that's how you come out after the half. And they Putting just that turned them over left and right. Putting that D Quick down. pass over by Armando. He slows it down, passes to number zero. Von Stupid going to put it down, and they're going to turn it over. They're going to put it down, down, and they're going to turn it over. You know that's a personal opinion, you know. Nah, they putting that D down. They giving that D like that's where they was born and raised at. Look at the oh, block. block. What I tell you? Get airborne. Dunk it. Smoke down. That would have been a nasty dunk if he would have connected. Smoke Unfortunately, he didn't put it down. Coach ain't love that one. So he had to call a T.O. T.O. timeout. And that mean another pad, another PSA. <laughs> so we gonna toss it right now to the PSA. I am a leader and not a follower. I will live above the influence. I will graduate in the top ten of my class. I will not be a product of my environment. I will respect women. I will not find my happiness in others. I will let my light shine through the dark times. I will not discriminate against 
religion, or sexual orientation. I will speak my success into existence. What's up, this is Larry Hughes, you're watching Hoops High. <laughs> and we're back. You just tuning in, we're here at 1313 Sacramento, Collins Academy Big Gym. I'm Kimberly Stewart, as your play-by-play -play announcer. On the side of me, I Big have... Big Bun, yeah. Ah, ah, ah. Get it on out, get it on out. Ah, ah, ah. Yeah, we back. Tied number two for Von Stuber inbound. A quick pass and went to they number moving. four hands, number 15 hands, number and one, bang, number three. Bang. No Ow. Billy Will. Air. Thought that was going to be this nothing but net. Oh, it, it, it really was it nothing but net. It didn't go in at all. Maybe it just looked a little too good. Now we have Hope Academy number one, Armando rocking them. Pass it to number zero, Anthony Hampton. And a steal by number 15, Joe oh. David McDaniels. Put it in there for a quick two points. They up a dub. Number zero, Anthony Hampton with the pass. Number three, who chokes up, misses it. That's grade A defense. Grade A defense. True. We have number 12, Lafayette McGarry. And for number one, Armando for Hope Academy. No, no, you got to shoot that. Uh-uh. Almost a steal by number zero. But the three and by and number out. 15 is off the mark. David McDaniel. We have number 12, Lafayette McGarry. Taking the ball down, number 15 from Von Stupin, reaching a little bit. Please check out the Free Spirit Media website at www.freespiritmedia.org. Or check us out on YouTube, search Free Spirit Media, if you are YouTube channel. Number 15, David with bucket the after game. bucket. They can't stop the Panther. They putting that D down. I don't think we will be recording that song anytime soon. But that was a good play by number one, Demetrius Faulkner, and number That's the 15, official David McDaniel. We have a turnover mm -hmm. by number 12, Lafayette McGarry. Five, Five, Five second delay. No, once you start bouncing the ball, you got to move from that position. They give you five seconds, and number 12, Lafayette McGarry just couldn't ice. get couldn't get there, couldn't move, not an inch because of the impeccable defense by Von Steuben. So Von Steuben, Panthers, taking the ball down. Number two, current in possession. Almost killed himself. Number two for the three, nope. and it's off the mark. Number 12. Slows it all the way McGarry down. McGarry pushing it, Lafayette to He assist. traveled, but hey. Yeah, number three, Alejandro moved his feet a couple times too many. And we have a little push off by number 15, David McDaniel, who's the ball is going to be down called. for Von Steuben. Number one, Demetrius Faulkner passes it back to David, who waits and waits. Almost was out. Good save by Demetrius Faulkner. Number 33 at the free throw. Gets the ball, turns, and misses, unfortunately. Number 33, Malachi. Ball is turned over. Number zero, Anthony brings the ball down. And at the half, gives it off to number 12. Air ball. Lafayette, who air balls, unfortunately. Bringing the ball down. Currently, we have Daly, number two. We have number one dishing it to number two, number 15 at the free throw. Tossing it to number three, who Get looks away. like he Get wanted to dunk, but it was a good two-hand layup. Once again, this this by Joe versus Please Hope. Thank you. Um, Von Scooper master is the Panthers. Substitution back into the ball game wearing number one, Armando Sutton. 
Number one, Armando checks back into the game for hope. Currently, we have, oh, a tip off. I'm sorry, not a tip off. The ball was tipped, I meant, by number 42. The 42, I'm sorry. Ricky Calvin for Hope Academy. Not only did he tip the ball, he fouled the possessor of the ball. So Von Stubman took it out on the side. Number one, Demetrius Falconer pass, number 15. To number three, to number two, to number one. Number 15 drives, and he was fouled. Number 32, Jordan Davis from Hope Academy foul number 15, David McDaniels. He was not shooting at the moment, so they're taking the ball out under the basket. David for the assist to number one, Darius Falcon. Good shot. Put a quick jump shot, two-pointer. We have number one. Armando passing number 32, gets the ball back, takes to the top of the key and drives, fakes, passes it to number 12, Lafayette Gary, who did oh. not get it in a dunk. That's how you put it down. Oh, dunk by number one, Demetrius Faulkner. He just put it in it like it was no problem. He Attempted it. pick. Good way to get on the floor. That's how you do that. That's some good. Offensive. He should have got that out of his hand. Well, number, 15, number one is currently still on the floor. With a little help from his team, he gets up. Good smack. That was some, some great defense. I've never seen a person dive so far for the ball and go so far. He wanted to get him another dunk. He did. Because his fast break points, he got about six of them at the moment. A pick by number 32, and Armando does not choose to take it. He goes the opposite way and swings to number 12, who looks like he wants to set up that three. But he swings it to number three instead, Alejandro who goes for the short shot, and it's in there. That's a good shot, that's a good shot. That was a little sky hook. Went straight up, came straight down right to the neck. Number 15, David McDaniel, long pass to number two. Who could have smacked the three? Little step up. He passed it to number three, who doesn't even drop the ball. He hop steps back like Don't a true big Don't forget to stay tuned for the Free Spirit, free spirit new Media News at the end of the broadcast. It comes on at 9.50 every Saturday. Learn about what's going on in Chicago and find out the latest and most important issues of the team. Back to more game action. Jeremy Davis, number 22 for Hope Academy with the long two for a quick two points. And a three by number one was not taken. Instead, he assists number 33 who misses. And over the back. Malachi, number 33 for Von Steuben. Puts it up and was not successful. Foul was called, turning it over to Hope. Number one, Armando, wrapping the ball, just spinning number 32 over, and the basket was good, no but basket. No basket. the basket was not counted. He was fouled by number 32, Jason Salar. That's his second. So that amazing play, two points were taken off, but it is still Hope Academy's ball. And number one, Armando has it back. He's rocking, shaking and baking. Does not take the pick from number 32 yet again, but he misses the shot. Number 15, bounce pass to number two. Back to number 15, David McDaniel. Swings it back to number two, Daly. David to number 32, Jason Salar, who looks, waits patiently. Number 12 steps out with the defense, Lafayette McGarry for Hope. Number one, Armando tells him to back back. He sticks D. 
Currently in a 3-2 zone, we have Hope Academy. All the big men from Von Steuben are posted at the free throw line, hands up, ready to go for the ball. Number 15, David, has been stalling, but is now was forced to take it in because the defense approached him. And now more stalling, have some swinging going on. Bounce pass to the big man. It was turned over, intercepted by Jordan Davis, number 32. And that's the third quarter. Scores currently 51-25, Von Steuben way. And we're going to toss to a quick PSA. Nothing what y'all on. Girl, come outside us. You always in the house. No, no I can't nothing. go at this table. Because, because what? I got to watch my baby. Let your little sister get her. She ain't doing nothing else? No. I'm a parent first, not this thing. Hey, you lost. Me as a teen mom have been pressured by a lot of my friends to go out and have fun besides taking care of my child. But it's up to me to make the decision that being a parent comes first. It's parenting over party. And we're back. And if you're just tuning in, we're at 1313 Collins Academy Big Gym for the all day tournament for Jimmy Sanders. Facing off against Hope Academy. Score is currently 51 to 25. We're at Collins. It is Von Steuben's possession. We have Von Steuben and Hope. Playing each other. The score is now 51 to 25. Von Steuben winning by 26. We have a shot by number 33, Malachi. He misses, but the tip back in by his partner, number three. He puts it in there. Joseph Rancher for the quick two points. Now we have Ron Steuben taking it back. Number three, pass to number 33, who brings it down and is immediately stripped by Hope Academy. He's too big to be getting the ball to from him like that. Yeah, when you're a big man like that, never post to drop the ball. Keep it up. That's a like good number 42 just did. Ricky. Very good shot. Ricky Calvin, assist by number one, Armando. Ricky with the two points, getting buckets out there yet again. Quick steal by Ricky, number 42, who was looking to pass That's it to number one, one, who finna jack up that three, and it's, it's off. off the mark. Didn't look as bad. Offensive rebound, though, by number 32, Jordan Davis. That's a foul, and clearly. Ricky just got fouled, sending him to the line. Almost got an N1, but. Number 33, Two is better than nothing. Malachi, he was fouled by Von Steuben's Malachi, 30 seconds, 30 seconds, number 33. With this timeout, we're going to talk to a quick piss up. Two weeks, you ready? But, but just, just not about your shit, you love me. Man, your baby didn't be living out my father. Okay, but my baby needs to pop. You need to be here. I want to step up because my father wasn't there for me, and I don't want my child to grow up fatherless. I'm ready.
More than half of all youth incarcerated for criminal acts lived in one parent families as children. Step up. Hello, my name is Kevin Durant. You're watching Hoops Hop. And we're back. Kimberly Stewart serving as your play-by-play -play commentator. Currently, we have number 42 at the free throw line from Hope Academy. Ricky Calvin, his first free throw was no good, but he has a second opportunity. Second one is no good as well, but he back paddles, gets on defense. Number 32 from Von Steuben, looking for an open man. 32 gets the ball back, he waits patiently. He fakes he the shot, he the gets the ball back from number two, Brandon passes Pope it Pope back Pope. to number two. Pro number Pro two bounce Pope. passes Pope. it to Pope. number three, and it's no good, but a good offensive rebound by number 15, David McDaniels. Ball was pushed out of bounds by one of the Hope Academy. So, back Von Steuben ball. Number two, Daly swings in it. Number 32, top of the key, bouncing, and dribbling, stalling, setting up a play. We have number 15 with a long pass. Number two, waiting. Tosses it back to the top of the key, and he swings number 15, number 32, back with the ball to number two. Long pass again, number 15. It's a lot of lobbing and time wasting going on. Hope not giving up though. They persistent, still trying. And a foul. Number 32 from Von Steuben, Jason Salah, foul. By number one, Armando from Hope Academy. Number two, taking the ball out. Gives it to number three, Jason Rancher, who passes it back. Number 32, Jason Salar, taking it to the right side. Number 15, driving. Puts it on the backboard, but it does not go in, unfortunately. We have number one, Armando, taking the ball down the court. Passes to number three, and it's blocked by number 15, block. David McDaniel, Von Steuben. Number 32. Passes it. He's just swinging a lot of quick passes, and it's in there. Number 15, David McDaniel for the assist. Number 32, trap. Throws the ball to Armando for the three, and it's off the mark. Number 15, wanting to lob the ball, number three. But he said, forget it. No we know need we are for not a always turnover. Perfect. But we are working hard and we always are learning. We thank you for your support and encouragement. We have number 32, passing the ball number two. 32 at the top of the key, Jason Salar. More good bounce passes and number three, Joseph Rancher caught under the rim and he is fouled going to the line for two shots. He was fouled by number 24, 25, I'm sorry, Tyvon Winston. Hope Academy currently has five fouls as a team. And the first free throw is in there, nothing but net. By number three, Joseph Rancher. Couple subs coming out, 32 coming out, 15 coming out for Von Steuben. Second shot is up, and it's in there as well. Bringing the score to 57-27, Von Steuben way. 
number one. Armando currently with the ball, pass it to number three. And it is stripped up by number 21 from Von Steuben. Carlton Pods. Number 32 swinging the ball. Want to see more Hoopside games? Now you can see four games on IHI. Go to www.ii.com slash Hoopside. games from the past or stream live. Have number one Armando from Hope Academy. Bringing the ball down, passes it to the big man, number 42, Ricky Calvin, who puts it in there. Uh, number 32, Von Steuben, Jason Salar. We have a three second violation from Von Steuben. Armando bringing it down. He's trapped a quick pick by number 42, Ricky Calvin, and a foul. At the line, we have number one, Armando, shooting two. First one is off. Oh, I'm sorry, it was a one and one. Substitution. And we have a sub. So, second shot. Up in the air. We have Vaughn Steuben bringing the ball down the court. Number 32, Jason Salar. Quick pass to number 21. Passes to 12. Number 32, Jason Salar bouncing. We got some new players in the game. Haven't seen till this quarter, getting them some playing time. Number 32, Jason Salar pushes it and misses. Gets his own rebound, tries to put it back up. And that one is no good as well but he is sent to the line, two shots. Number 32, Jason Salar shooting two. First one is off the mark. He kind of rushed that one. Second shot is in the air and it's off as well. Rebound by number three, Alejandro, bringing the ball down. Quick pass, number 25, Tyrone Winston. Number 22 with the jumper, and it's off the mark. Rebound by number 21, Carlton Potts for Von Steuben. And we have a quick, oh, game is over. End of the quarter. Your final score, we have Von Steuben, 59 to Hope Academy's 30. This is an outstanding game, as you can see. We have good sportsmanship at the half court line. All the teams shaking up. Good game, good game. And uh, going to their benches to see what their coaches have to say about how today's game was played. So, today has been a great day. This game has been intense. Even though at one point, Hope Academy was down by 30 points to be exact. They never gave up, they never stopped fighting. And for that, we're gonna toss to our sideline reporter for a quick interview.
Tiffany Moore, and I'm here with MVP Joseph Rancher. Saw Joseph, how does it feel to be the MVP of this game? It feels good. I was just making shots. So I know you're a senior, so how does it feel to have your team on your back, and what do you expect out of your team in this season? Uh, I expect that we win some big games, go down the deep in the city playoffs and, and state playoffs, so we're going to have a good season. So have you committed to any colleges, or have you been looking at any colleges? No, ma'am. Thank you so much for your time. Congratulations. You can catch Hoops High every Saturday at 8 p.m. on Channel 19 Can TV. Thank you for watching Hoops High. You can watch Hoops High on Can TV Channel 19 every Saturday at 8 p.m. Please visit www.hoopshigh.org to learn more. Hoops High and Free Spirit Media would like to thank our sponsors. We are grateful for their support in making our mission of youth media education and opportunity possible. Hoops High is family communication. Enjoy it. Hoops High is a sounding creativity commitment. Hoops High is exciting, meaningful. Hoops High is technology. A community. Who say is home? Love. Dedication. Inspired. Probably never was exposed to it, they probably would have never have done it, but it's something that you see that interests people a lot. I never worked with a camera, you know, it was my first time learning about a camera, you know, zooming in, zooming out. It was a real good experience for me, you know, I think it changed a lot in me too. It changed my how I think and it changed like something I like to do in life. When I get older, I want to be some type of actor. So being in this classroom really helped me out, really exercise my ability to act. We shooting it and we shooting it off like what we done been through and like people get to see it and they watching it and they liking it. Like young kids in the community can do stuff that's like worth some type of value. Meet Jaden, a 16 year old from Chicago. He likes reading, playing basketball and daydreaming. As one of 75 million youth in America, he is the future of our country. But today, Jaden's future is uncertain. A new economy is evolving as Jaden tries to find his way in a school system where more than 42% of students drop out and even more fall behind. For Jaden and others like him, the future looks grim. But there is hope. Youth media programs connect with kids like Jaden, moving them from discouragement toward opportunity through the power of communication. Jaden learns about journalism, technology, and culture. He spends his time engaged at school, in youth centers, and at libraries. He discovers how to observe the world around him and share his own stories. He becomes one of more than 10,000 teens involved in the Chicago Youth Voices Network, a collection of innovative programs that come together with a bold vision to reach more people like Jaden, to transform education, and to shape the health of our city. Together, the network gives vision to the journalists, artists, engineers, and leaders of our future. One story, poem, film, blog post, one youth at a time. Today, three of the worst games were banned from a new video arcade. And as Vicky Vargas tells us, some there are relieved, others aren't so sure. 
parents are often the first to ask, could this lead to this? The video games you just saw are some of the games I've played since I was a child. I used to think video games affected children's behavior, including my own. Through the process of making this documentary, I realized it's not as easy as blaming video games. I would say violence is the act of being like aggressive towards something or someone? Violence to me means like conflict between just two things or two people, um, like fist on or anything else that has harmful ways towards each other. One of the reasons why violence is used in video games is it's a really quick, easy way to demonstrate conflict. Conflict is what makes media interesting. You know, young kids are usually interested in superheroes, cartoons, and things like that, and there are a lot of those in games. Uh, I think as people get older, they're drawn to fantasy, you know, whether it's the fantasy of being a soldier that, you know, single-handedly wins the war, or a fantasy of being a magician that fights all these dragons or anything like that. At Stanton's Golfland, manager Ken Beck understands the concern, but he says games like the band Lethal Enforcer only teach kids how to shoot, a sort of high-tech take on the old Wild West. There are different games that are meant to appeal to different people. Video games are visually interesting. They might have cartoon characters, they might have realistic people. They're usually meant to be splashy, there might be explosions or like driving a car, or things that people find exciting. To me, um, it, it's enjoyable because it's not real, so it's not as, it's not like it's actually happening, but you think like, cool, like, like a game, a video game. Video designers, they can make a game or a main character on a game do anything. Video games are designed to do that. They're designed to draw people in. They're designed to be fun. And so people put a lot of energy and thought into what can we grab people with? What event can we show in the game that you say, that's really cool. I, you know, that's cooler than what I've seen in a movie. Or, you know, playing as this guy seems really fun. Or I'd want to do this. Or I'd want to try that. <laughs> Children, they, they like sponges, so whatever they see, they suck in. The part of the brain that will help you as a teenager process all this and do more long-term planning and more sequencing and thinking things through what we sometimes call executive functioning, rank ordering things and coming up with problem solving skills. That part of your brain doesn't fully develop until you're in your 20s. It, it has a big impact on them because they're so they're still learning, and they're at the stage where they, they learn in the most. I can't imagine that a third grader playing Call of Duty wouldn't be unaffected by it because it's such graphic kinds of violence. And I think as an adult, you can appreciate what the violence is for, where it fits. I don't think you understand that as a kid. And so the brain's this wonderful organ that's always growing, always responding to the environment. It's, we refer to that as plasticity. The brain's always reacting to what it's exposed to. I mean, you can't necessarily say everybody gonna turn bad from playing video games. And some people, it depends on, it's not just the video games, it depends on your household. It's, I say a great deal, because I have a little brother, and like, ever since I little started playing Call of Duty or games like that, he always wanna go around making guns like co hangs and stuff. So I had to make him stop playing Call of Duty by breaking my own Call of Duty. I think the, the video game rating system came out of a backlash against video games from concerned parents. A lot of this started with this game Mortal Kombat in the early 1990s where you had digitized people, you know, like decapitating each other, you punch somebody and, and bleed. And that wasn't something that had been done in the technology. The technology wasn't good enough to do that. The ratings from uh, the ratings board is an educational tool. Parents need to know what their kids are playing. At least the parents who are paying attention need to know what their kids are playing. And so I think that there were enough people that wrote to their congressman or wrote to whatever politician or wrote to video game companies and complained and said, what you're doing is illegal, what you're doing is hurting our children. 
that it caused the video game industry to add these ratings? I just think kids will imitate it, but it depends on like parental control. Like if your parent can control the child good enough not to make them want to do this in like real life. So I don't know how effective it is in terms of keeping a child away from games like that, but at least, you know, we have a body of knowledge that parents can trust, established by a group that understands that parents are looking for information and they're trying to provide that. And I think it's good that they have ratings because we have all these different kinds of games now that need this classification. We need to know that this game involves you know, the use of alcohol or stealing cars or shooting people, whereas this game just involves playing hockey or, you know, running around a fantastic universe and collecting coins. I think that it is both the consumer's responsibility and the designer's responsibility. You don't know what's going on because you're at a young age, but you see enough to you know, to ha come to a conclusion, or you see enough to go and ask somebody or go try and do this, and you f actually find out what it really is. You have to know that any art you create will have some kind of impact, and you have to be willing to be responsible for the impact that you may create. You don't feel the violence the same way you would as an adult. You know, if you see somebody getting shot on TV, you should have a reaction to that, because you have this empathy that you get as an adult. You see them as a person, and you understand the person being injured or, or why that happens. I think I believe video games cause violence because I wanted easy answers to the violence in my community and in the media. Everything got more complicated when I learned about drones. Unmanned aerial vehicles, or UAVs, also called drones, are a controversial component of the Obama administration's efforts to fight terrorism. A drone is basically used by army, um, like army people, to sit behind a control panel and be able to manage all of the aircraft from behind the the screen. My favorite video game will be Call of Duty. It's basically like a shooting game. It's just you go around. It's like what they do in the military, just in video game form. Using the drones, they try to be better at it. So every time they get something that, or they get a command to do, they're like, okay, I have to do this command. And then they have to try to be better. I have to be better than the last time. And that's just like a video game, right? You're trying to go to the next level. You're trying to beat that, that game, but it's not really a game. You know? You're not gonna find definitive research on that topic. And so what you get are correlations that the more kids do this, the more they tend to do that. There's a lot of conflicting information. Uh, not a lot of study has been done. There's been a lot of studies done, but it's not conclusive yet. All the research I've ever seen says that there's no connection. There are some studies by certain scientists that say that seeing anything violent causes people to do violent things. But there are also studies that say that what makes people aggressive is competition. It's not a video game, it's the fact that you're competing, whether it's against a computer or another person. And I could also say there's some video games that can help you problem solve and help you explore and be creative and do other things. So I can see some positive skills you might learn from video games. It's about balance. We can show hyper-stylized violence in ways we can do it cheaply, we can do it creatively. Um, and just because we can, should we?
Michael Ingram. And Uncle Vontae Sneed. Every here at West House for the first down your hoops out free throw classic. Check us out every Saturday at 8 p.m. on Channel 19 Can TV. It's fun to eat supper with your family, especially when there is good food on the table. Later on, drink lots of water. A good snack of crackers and milk at home. That's the good kind of food if you're hungry after school. And then, play. Hard play. Plenty of pep now. See what good eating habits can do for you. Americans are not winning their battle against obesity. One study found that obesity rates for adults actually rose in 28 states According this year. According to experts, Only almost two-thirds of American adults are seriously overweight or obese. That's a 150% increase in just the last 30 years. Obesity, obesity among children, in children and teenagers is up decades. from 16 to 17.1 percent over the past two years. Teenage health and in two decades paints a worrying picture with one in four youngsters overweight or obese. Spending $150 billion a year treating obesity-related uh, illnesses. So we know this is a problem and there's a lot at stake. But not even her expectations that Michelle and his daughter got one of the second new study published today. North Londale, currently home to about 36,000 residents. In the 1960s, there were not nearly as many corner stores, fast food restaurants, and vacant lots. But just like technology, things change. Riots followed the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. in 1968 which left many of the stores on Roosevelt Road destroyed and over 75% of the businesses in the community disappeared. Today, with over 93% of the North Lawndale population African American, it faces an even bigger problem, obesity. Obesity is a scary word, a medical term, for being severely over what uh, medical professionals feel like ideal weight is um, for your height, um, for your age, for your sex. One misconception is that people who are obese are fat, um, and that's not necessarily the case. Obesity is more like a con like the the condition of being unhealthy, more so than like you just like everyone who's fat is obese. There are many different cultural perceptions of obesity. So depending upon which community you go into, uh, people will perceive uh, different weights for different children. There are certain foods that are just associated with certain ages and, you know, Flaming Hots were not things that I ate in my community, but you can't come around here and not eat Flaming Hots, right? Well, when you talk about uh, not having a healthy lifestyle, you know, you think about diseases. You know, you think a lot of, about a lot of illnesses that people are struggling with. Obesity places people at risk for issues like diabetes, heart disease, kidney disease, high blood pressure, and, and on and on like that. If you were to ask me what do I think the number one issue is from a healthcare perspective in our community, my answer is obesity. It's being overweight. Obesity happens because of lifestyle concerns and community concerns, as well as some contributions of um, what you inherit from your parents, of course. And uh, it often involves a lot of behavior change, and change is hard for people. There are factors in society that determine, not always, not for everyone, we call them risk factors in epidemiology, which means that you'll tend to be obese, say in this ca case, if you have certain characteristics. And those characteristics are, if you're poor, that's the most important one, and the other one that's on a par with poverty is if you're a person of color and therefore victimized by racism.
The African Americans suffer a great deal uh, not eating healthy, uh, not experiencing the uh, healthy eating such as fruits and vegetables and things like that. In North Lawndale, it's primarily an African American community. In South Lawndale, it's primarily a Mexican American community. So these communities, when you look at them, you know, they are areas of ethnic minorities. Number one, I think it's expensive to eat healthy, and uh, especially considering our economy. It's just very difficult for uh, people, uh, parents, uh, to invest that kind of money in things that they don't find as important. If you can go to, you know, McDonald's and like, you know, buy the whole menu for like $5, for a family that, you know, doesn't have a lot of money to spend on a meal every day, they might not even look for another alternative because it's like, I know that's cheap, you know, I know I can go to McDonald's and get whatever for, you know, this amount of money. If you are a victim of racism and if you are poor, then you're more likely to live in communities, to live in neighborhoods, for example, where there are no supermarkets, uh, where there are no, is no, you know, fresh foods and so on. Every day coming to work, I'll see, you know, some children walking down the street and they'll have like their bag of Flaming Hots and their juice, which is just colored sugar water um, for, for their breakfast, but they are less expensive than, you know, going to somewhere and buying apples sometimes. Um, they're readily available at the corner store, which is directly across the street. Many of your African American communities suffer the most, mainly because of the fact that there's not a lot of access to healthy eating. In North Lawndale, there is right now one supermarket, Leamington's on Roosevelt Road, and frequently there have been no supermarkets. And so if we give advice to people who say, well, eat fresh fruits and vegetables, where are they going to get it? I do think it's limited in the sense of like, you know, there might be one grocery store here, but then the next like place that you can get like raw foods or like, you know, whole foods might be, you know, a few miles away. And um, in my neighborhood, you know, some people might be limited um, in that capacity to, you know, to get transported there. And so if you don't have access to a car very easily, if you don't have um, access to a place like that to go, you just stay home and you eat and you get overweight and you watch TV. In addition to the lack of healthier foods, there are other environmental factors that contribute to a person not being healthy. One of those factors is violence. We tend to have relatively high concentrations of, of poverty in one place, which translates into things like the absence of uh, good retail, food stores, or it translates into a lot more uh, crime than anybody is comfortable with. I'm a rich white man, but in a sense, that gives me a bit of insight because I see what goes on in rich white communities as well as in poor communities of color. And there's whole lots of stuff that society makes easy to go on in poor communities of color that in a million years would never happen uh, in rich white communities. Talking to a lot of parents who are in my program are concerned um, about safety issues. So they don't want their children out riding bikes. They don't want their children out running around just kind of being a kid. If there are no parks, where do you exercise? But if there are parks and they in turn are dangerous and people don't want to go out into the parks, especially at night, or let their children into the parks uh, because they're too dangerous, then that also is a structural issue that has to do with racism and poverty. So in North Lawndale, when you look around, we don't have the things that the suburban communities have in terms of parks, in terms of safe places for people to go to be able to get exercise. You know, we don't even have a big mall here, right? Where sometimes people who live near a mall, they'll go to the mall and not go shopping. They'll go in the mall and go for a walk, right? It's a safe place. It's a warm place. Out there, you got like healthy stores, like on the corner stores that are like walking distance. Also, you got like yoga bars and things like that instead of like eating like all the sugar ice cream and all the junk and stuff. There's way more, you know, fast food places than there might be, you know, a farmer's market. 
As in every community, there are both strengths and weaknesses. In many ways, there can't be a community more beautiful, say, than North Lawndale. And it has a, a glorious history. At the same time, I mean, right now, North Lawndale is a very poor community and faces a lot of limitations. We each have a personal responsibility to do better despite racism, despite poverty. Making people aware that it's not um, a one-time thing, that it's a lifestyle change, that you do not have to go cold turkey. At an early age, children don't go out and buy their own food and their choices of like what they eat. They eat with like, what their parents give to you. So if you're a child that's at home and your parents eat nothing but like fatty foods and junk, as you get older, you're gonna eat fatty food and junk. I would like to see uh, more of our parents uh, have some healthy snacks for our kids, uh, something they can have throughout the day. Instead of the flaming hots, uh, the Milky Ways and the cookies. Our mission is to say, no, if you provide a beautiful quality facility, people will come and they will enjoy it and they will spend money and it'll be successful. And so we create the opportunity for a patient to care for themselves because we can't get on the treadmill with them. We can only provide the treadmill. We wanted to focus on food um, and give it kind of a green context. If you're not in the environment that doesn't, you know, facilitate you knowing these alternatives, then, you know, to a certain extent, you're gonna be a product of your environment. Man, this test hard. Let me see your test. Hey. What? You got a dollar? Thank you. Hey, can I get some of your chips? Man, you beg too much, yeah. Dang, you could have saved me some more. But hey, let me see the ball. Hey, man, on the real though, you gotta stop begging so much. <sighs> Come on, man. I mean, you gotta be independent and not codependent. You know what? You right. <laughs> When I think of breast cancer, I think of survival, extended life. Hope. Total fear. I don't think, Kenya, there's really a reason. Um, we looked at family history. We looked at location where I was living. We looked at condition, looked at diet. I don't think there was any real reason why I was diagnosed other than I was a woman with breasts. Without good health, you have absolutely nothing. I don't care how rich you are, how wonderful your life is. If you don't have good health, you don't function well anymore. Most people take their health for granted. So if, when you're feeling good and feeling healthy, you may not associate that with happiness. But if you started getting sick or were told you had breast cancer, then it would affect the quality of your life. Or people would certainly say that their happiness is affected when they're not healthy. Um, and so health is important for people's overall sense of well-being. At the time, I was operating a safe and sober house for women, women that was coming in from a 28-day program. And I was up in the mirror and I was showing them how to do a self-breast exam when I discovered for myself a lump in my breast. Uh, it was um, kind of a panicky situation, but uh, I finished the presentation and then I went downstairs and I got on the phone and I began to talk to my doctor and he said, come in right away. 80% of all breast cancers start in the milk ducts of the breast. They're the little tubes that take the milk to the baby. Um, they start in there and eventually figure out a way to break out into the surrounding tissue and then potentially can travel. So you can have a very, very healthy person who eats great and exercises all the time and still gets a breast cancer. But in terms of lowering your risk of developing one, exercise, maintaining a healthy weight, limiting alcohol intake, those things are all lifestyle choices and things you can modify. In general, if you look at African-American women compared to white women in the nation and in Chicago, we tend to not be as healthy overall. Now, that may not be the case for, you know, a specific black woman and a specific white woman, but if you look at the numbers and the populations in general, um, African-Americans tend to be less healthy. Chicago is one of the worst 
outperforming cities in terms of the disparities according to breast cancer. So my colleagues and I have published a paper, and in that paper we compared the disparities, the difference between black and white breast cancer mortality rates in the 25 biggest cities in the United States. And among those 25 biggest cities, Chicago was the fourth worst. And uh, black women uh, are almost twice as likely to die from breast cancer as white women. There are lots and lots of different things that go into that. Um, but one of them certainly is access to health care. And certain groups, especially African Americans, have a higher rate of uninsurance. And they also access, we have data to show that they access often less high quality care. Both of those affect survival. Black women don't get enough mammography. So they need to get more mammograms and they need to get them at regular rates. That's one cause. The second is that the quality of mammography is frequently inferior for black women. And so we need to make sure that the quality of those mammograms is higher. So when a cancer is present, the mammogram will detect it, detect it as early and as soon as possible when it's small, and then we can treat it effectively. The University of Illinois did a recent study where they looked at women who were diagnosed with breast cancer, and then they looked at if they had had a mammogram a year before or two years before, and they looked at those mammograms, and they often found signs of early breast cancer in the prior mammograms that had been missed. And when they looked at the sort of women who had the highest miss rate, it was poor women, women who were publicly insured, women with less education. Because I take care of a population of women who are un- or underinsured, what you see is a lot of them come in at much later stages um, where the tumors are, the cancers are bigger, they've already spread beyond to the lymph nodes or to somewhere other part of their body. If you don't have a good health plan and you don't have access to a car that will get you to your doctor quickly, it is difficult. So many African-American women may not go or they so busy with their children that they're putting them first and not their health first. And so quite often I think our death rate is higher because they don't diagnose this to us in the later stage. We still have um, dual systems of health care um, in this country that that's delivered by things around class and race and economics and things like that. And so if you're poor and live in a poor community and don't have good insurance, then um, which black women are more likely to be, then your ability to, again, get good quality care is less. Here's the two main impediments to making things better, poverty and racism. And I think there's, there's a lot of both of those in Chicago and they're both, of course, attacking black women more than any other group of women. In the last few years, the state of Illinois has had some very significant um, budget problems. And so when a state has those sort of budget problems, they have to decide on their priorities. We would suggest that they've made some bad choices in how they've allocated resources. And so um, Governor Quinn last year proposed to cut $3.3 million from the breast and cervical cancer program. I don't know if you're aware of this, but there's only one industrialized country in the world that does not have a national health care system. And that country is the United States. And so instead you have a, a lot of poor people not being able to afford health care. They don't have insurance. They can't get health care. And then, for example, they can't afford to pay for a mammogram. So for me, um, I'm a physician, I work at a hospital, so I had really good access to high quality care. And that's not the case for all women in Chicago, um, in the nation, and particularly for women who, are, who look like me. So um, black women in the city um, tend to have a harder time navigating the healthcare system and getting good quality com care when you, you compare them to uh, white women.
knowledge is power. Once you uh, know and understand about this body and how it works and uh, the issues that we as women go through, uh, then we're equipped with information and that information gives us uh, an opportunity to take control of our own health. My biggest advice to everybody is be more afraid not to go to the doctor. There's a lot of fear about cancer and about breast cancer and there are a lot of myths about it. So first of all, people think all cancer is fatal. If you get cancer, that's it, you're dead. So don't name it, okay? Don't claim it, don't name it. And that is unfortunate because cancer, breast cancer is one of those things where you actually do want to find it before it finds you. Particularly for women, uh, we tend to be the caregivers of the family and we'll put um, needs of our children, put every, everyone else's needs as a priority and go to the doctor last ourselves. And so we'll make sure that our kids go to their, to their pediatrician and get their vaccines or if they have a cold or whatever, but we'll delay our own care um, trying to take care of our family's needs. If you take just what they give you and just, you know, uh, you may not get the best treatment plan, but because you ask questions and you're concerned and you ask about the medicine and you, you know, uh, they, they give you the best when you're concerned about yourself. Keep living, you know. Every time I want to feel sorry for myself, I see somebody out there and I say, you have nothing to complain about. You're out here every day, you're enjoying life. But you, like I said, you, you will have the scars, but it doesn't stop you. Every day is a blessing, Kenya. Uh, after having breast cancer, I look at the sky, the sky looks bluer. Uh, I look at the rain, the rain looks wetter. I look at the colors, your red shirt is redder. I look at the grass, the grass is greener. Uh, I could laugh at things that wasn't funny before. Uh, I could eat food uh, and it tastes wonderful. Uh, since then, life just has been a plus. There has been a bonus. Um, a day in the life of breast cancer is a life extended. Now to keep it. Depends what you write. Art. That's my one word. It's art. It's an underrated form of art. Gave me a voice in the city. I would say relief. Mm. Just art. Some would say just expression. Some would say creativity. Some might say living. But really, for us, it's grounded in writing. We are writers. That's what we call ourselves. That's what we do. First of all, graffiti is, is a mark on a surface, right? Um, then the urban graffiti that we have experienced in the last 50 years that came from Philadelphia and New York City and other inner city areas uh, was a venue for young people to, to express themselves through vandalism, uh, putting their names up, getting props, recognition, and fame for that. Um, and then, once you have, what up now, once you have like skills based on, once you have skills based on spray painting, then you could take it further. It was tagging, it was tagging that made it possible for me to learn how to paint a butterfly, right? Um, or to be able to paint any language. 
paint any language because all languages are the same. They build, they build on a line and on curves, right? So that means you could go anywhere in the world and paint if you know how to do graffiti. So back to the history of it, in Chicago, it, it's, it had always been here, but in different forms. People used rollers and paintbrushes back in the day. Old school game bangers, the OGs used to use uh, rollers to put their names up. When graffiti came from New York, then people began to use spray paint to put their names up. And then it evolved from the tag into the wild style lettering that we know of today and the productions that we paint. You know, like when, when you were a kid growing up in Chicago during that time, and it's still like this today, I, I don't think that's changed so much. Like you pretty much know which gang is in the neighborhood by looking at the walls. So what happened was that the, the gangsters were claiming neighborhoods, you know, and when New York City graffiti came about, it was all about getting out of your neighborhood. Like you didn't want to be the guy that wrote his name all over your neighborhood. You wanted to be the guy that was writing your name all over the city. It depends what you write, you know? Like, I guess if you write, like, gang signs or, you know, stuff like that, it does make it look bad, but, I mean, this is like drawings, it's art. I mean, look at that and look at this. It takes a lot of, it takes a lot of talent to do this. The difference between gang graffiti and art graffiti is that gang graffiti is more of vandalizing possession over territory, and it's not to, like, it's not for any emotion into it. It's just saying, this is mine, this is who we are, you know? And it's just, it's vandalizing, you know? It has no... It has no feeling into it. It has no purpose. One of the hugest, most beautiful things that ever happened to me <laughs> was becoming a graffiti writer because um, it got me off the block. I mean, a lot of the guys that I grew up with, a lot of guys that I was friends with from the time I was like five, six years old, you know, they got caught up in that, in that gang stuff. And they, they could not walk three blocks east, you know, west, north, south without fear of, you know, getting their head split open, right? You know, our community here suffers, man, from, the, from segregation, from uh, racist housing policies uh, that have made it so that ownership is difficult here, so there's too many dilapidated structures around. So the, what, what should you do with that? Just leave them brown or, or, or whack or, you know, uh, damaged? No, we want to bring some color to it. So um, the objective is basically to bring color to the community and beautify and transform it by painting these walls. Well, I see my man painting it stuck out to me because, like I said, I really don't see this in my community a lot, especially from back in the days to now. But it's a, it's a new way to express yourself. It's hot. It stands out in the community. It makes you wonder, like, who did it and how could I get involved? So. It's what's up, man. Hey, just picks your brain and actually makes you see that it's more out here than just partying for entertainment or to express yourself or gangs and drugs and all that. You can draw, you can do art around the community, express yourself on the wall or something. When we painted this wall, we had like 15 kids for a summer program, and we painted the largest uh, mural in the city, but it was a graffiti production. It was all real graffiti, real burners telling the truth, like we did the police officers, a pig, and you know, chasing after kids and stuff. That really changed how I realized, like, man, this really affects our community in a positive way. Because all those kids would go by and they'd be like, I painted that, I painted that. This was my idea, this was my idea. And I was like, man, this is, this is beautiful. I would like to do this more. I think that if you know how to do art, do graffiti, then you should do it because it's, something that has to do with emotion about how you feel about how things are probably going in your life basically if you use a dark color that means something bad if you use a white color that means something good i think art graffiti all that is just a fun thing to do. it doesn't matter what anybody thinks about graffiti or art art graffiti is more of a this is what the world is this is what it has come to this is what we're doing and this is what we want you know it's just someone's feelings into a canvas and just showing that the world isn't right or just showing how their mind is going. Something that can't be said and can't be understood and just seen through one's hands. It's more like it's more like a type of expression I would say. Yeah like you know people have like certain ways of expressing themselves? The we express themselves through art. So it'll be like politic and art let's say you go hand in hand, you know? It's like representing us and what we have to say. But we don't like we don't have a word, you know. They don't take our word, so might as well show them, right? You know, it was 
fun hanging out with you. Hopefully we can do it again sometime. Yeah. Oh, look at the time. Free Spirit Media is on. Huh? Today on FSM News, we show you how CTA closings will affect your commute to school and work. And prom season is here. Do you have your special dress? So don't go anywhere. FSM News will be right back. Hello, and welcome to FSM News. I'm Lindale Connor. And I'm Tanaya Robson. Why are you listening to it? It's loud. Oh, this? It, it, it's just a song I heard. It was made by a student at the Gary Comer Youth Center. Really? Who? Um, well, check him out for yourself. Mm -hmm. The music is my inspiration. Like I've been rapping since I was nine years old. Watching my uncles and his friends on the streets, they just freestyle all the time. And one day I stepped outside and watched they was doing. So I practiced it one day, and then they was out there again. So I just jumped in and did it. Boy, I am the man. Did it? Did you know? Coded in the North Pole. Got a head for my show. Bang roll twenty four inch rim. Got to put them on hold. Well, I do actually have an icon. It used to be Lil Wayne, but then uh, he, it sounded like he was saying the same stuff over and over again, but it's just like all rappers. It affects people in a, in a hype way, like, like I'll say like in a cheeky turn, like what they say, turn up type of way. And like, they just, like, once you hear my songs, you want to hear a different one, or you want to play it over and over again. That's amazing. He really has some skills. I agree. Wait, did you hear that? I think some kids are taking prom pictures. Oh my god, that reminds me. I'm behind on finding the prom dress. Never fear, FSM's very own Anaja Smith is here with the latest fashion tips. Hey you, prom season is here. Do you have the perfect dress yet? Or are you one of those ladies who's waiting until the last minute? Well, no worries, I'm here to help. Here are the trends. When you go to the stores, expect to see hollow hems, pastel colors, and sequins. Fashion designer Sherry Hill features long-fitted employee dresses that include tulle and lace. On the other hand, Tony Bowles, a Paris designer, suggests shorter designs are in or along with slits. Either way, embrace those long legs. What would you decide? I'm Anita Smith reporting from the Fashion Corner at FSME. Tonight, Tasha gets arrested for junk driving. That ride home cost her $10,000 in fines. A week later, Tone's mom was found crying because he spent all the rent money on Ciroc and now they've been evicted. Here from tonight, leaving another party drunk, Maya leaves with a stranger and is never heard from again. Don't be dumb, stop drinking. On May 19th, the CTA's red line will start renovation. This means that the red light will completely close from Cermak Chinatown through the 95th and Dan Ryan for five months. They go get in the first period on time. Here's Xavier Smith with the community's reaction. 
Beginning in the spring, the rail line will be drastically reducing stations. Many students on the south side of Chicago will have to spend more hours getting to and from school in their extracurricular activities. I'm here on 69th Street at the CTA Red Line asking people how this will affect their lives when it gets shut down. I have to be at school at 7.45, so I get up at like 5 every morning to get up here at like 6, and I get at school at 3 o'clock. It's really going to affect me because I don't have a car, and right now I ain't got the financial needs to buy a car. The new service that will be in place for the CTA while it is closed is called the shuttle bus. We asked people how they felt about this accessible, free, new transportation system, and this is how they felt. And then they're talking about putting us on shuttles to get us to where we're going. So a shuttle, you know, traffic the way it is, it's even longer now. They should be putting in more stations to be able to accommodate the, the traveler that they got. It's going to be hard to get to school. It's, it's going to take us a long time, about 20 hours or something. No, it won't. <laughs> probably, it's probably going to take us a good hour to get to school. With stations closing, some people will have to make sacrifices to cope with their increased commute times. I play softball. So my mom probably won't make me, let me do that anymore if I get home too late. And then my grades might go down because I might not be at school at 745 anymore. I might have to catch like four buses to school. So I might, I'm going to catch a bus from all the way back Rainbow Beach to all the way in 96 Michigan. As you can see, people are still going to carry on with their daily life activities. However, it will just be more time consuming. This is Xavier Smith reporting for FSM News. Before we go, we have one more PSA. It's about teen runaways. Be sure to pay attention. It may make some young person make a better decision. Why are you coming in so late? I'm just coming to lead a practice. What time is this? Does it matter? Yes, it really does. I don't know. Uh, no more worries. Just go to your room. Whatever. So, Ms. Jackson, you're friendly every class and you have to serve some school. You know you're not leaving at the house this summer. Yes, I am. Uh, let's go. So he's really going to cut the internet off on me. I don't like this. I don't think I can do this anymore. This is not the life I want to live. If you are a teenager who has ran away, please go to www.teenliving.org or call 866-803-8336. It's time to go, but we'll be back next time. Wait, we have to tell them how they can find us until then. Oh yeah, I forgot. How can they find us? You can find us on ABC7, Chicago's website, under the community section. You can also check us out on Facebook. Search FSM News. Three. Two. One. That's, that's a wrap. wrap. Why it start like this? Come on, they changed it. Good job. Ouch. Where the clap at? You just messed up my car and take it right beside you. Now, Clay, hey! Yeah, I agree. Dang! <laughs> <laughs> Free Spirit Media cultivates diverse youth voices to transform media and society.